Hello everyone, this is Chris McAdoo, the Chief Experience Officer for Knoxville Entrepreneur Center, a nonprofit business accelerator located right in the heart of downtown Knoxville, Tennessee, dedicated to changing lives through entrepreneurship. As always, honored to be with you in your ears and in your eyes, talking about the things and the people that, well, that make things happen. And today I'm joined by Ranjit Anthony. Thank you. Yes, Ranjit, tell us a little bit about yourself and your company, Pearly Brook Labs. My name is Ranjit Anthony. I'm the CEO and founder of Pearly Brook Labs. Um, so uh, I started my career as a software engineer um, and I changed jobs multiple times and I ended up with a company called Pelco, which made uh, security cameras. Uh, Pelco was one of the largest security manufacturing company in the world at that time. And uh, I took that experience and started Pearly Brooks in 2013 uh, with the focus to develop a proactive video management software. And uh, from 2013 to 21, we pivoted multiple times and we ended up with this product uh, which is called Flagman. It's an industrial safety automation platform. So a little over 10 years. Yes. Many pivots. Yes. What are, it's, it's always interesting to me to understand the journeys of an entrepreneur. Yes, correct. Right? Yeah. Because there's things that I th you think are going to happen. Correct. But then they hit the reality of the market. Correct. Or they hit the reality of the technology available. Yes, correct. You know, what would you say is one of the top things that you've taken from your over decades experience as an entrepreneur with Pearly Brook? The most important thing about entrepreneurship is patience. In the sense, you know, uh, first of all, you don't know what you're building. You have to be patient to understand what you're building. Uh, it would take a long time to actually figure it out, figure out. The second thing is your customers don't know what they want. You have to be patient to understand what they really want and uh, and you should be ready to pivot when you have that enlightenment or realization, okay? And the third thing is, you know, your spouses, they don't know what they, uh, what you are doing. So you have to be patient enough with them to explain to them and to motivate them, uh, you know, uh, win their confidence to to feel that you are doing something worthwhile and uh, this is the three uh, you know pillars of patience that uh, no, any entrepreneur should have to actually uh, build a great product to actually make it happen yes well and so you have this history you know as a as a computer engineer mm -hmm. um, you studied in India now, your company is based out of um, Portsmouth, New Hampshire, right? Correct. Yeah. Uh, what are, I guess right now, where are you in development of this particular, you know, project, um, product? Like, are, you, are you hitting them? Are you in the market right now? Yes, we are in the market. We started selling our product in 2022. Okay. Uh, so that was, you know, uh, that was during the COVID or just... Uh, at the edge of the yeah. COVID. Um, so uh, we didn't develop this for Indian market, but at that time we didn't have any other option to actually start trying in Indian market. And we made tremendous strides in the Indian market. We acquired around 75 plus customers, uh, all global with global subsidiaries. So our targeted customers are called EHS, Environment Health and Safety Engineering Team in a large manufacturing companies. And uh, one of they are one of the biggest network professionals in the world. And if they find something useful in their facility, they would actually share it in their network. Yes. And this network of s effect has actually, you know, uh, uh, helped us to uh, reach other customers as well. Now we are in a phase that these same companies are referring us to their uh, US subsidiaries here. So we have acquired like four customers in the US also. And uh, I'm just back from an installation in Worcester, Massachusetts uh, today. Well, and let's, let's talk about literally what you are installing. 
So okay. talk to me about, <coughs> you know, what, what you call industrial safety automation. Okay. What is it? What does it mean? And what are the things that you actually put in place? Okay. So uh, a little bit of context. Uh, you know, workplace accidents, right? Uh, there is... Uh, so in any accidents, one of the initiating events of an accident is a human error. And our thesis is that if you take out that human error from the equation, we can stop the accident. And uh, unfortunately, to detect a human error is a difficult thing. Uh, there is uh, currently no available methods to detect it. So what the Environment Health and Safety Engineering team do is they set up standard operating processes on how to interact with the machines, how to approach the machines, what kind of tools they need to use, what kind of PPE they need to wear. And they set up this uh, redundant SOPs that internally affect the production. Uh, to, to give you an example how the, the uh, accidents would impact the companies is, you know, one of our customer, they are an uh, aluminum smelter and uh, they had a conveyor belt accident. And they had to close down their facility for a week uh, due to some uh, media kind of, you know, uh, uh, media made it worse, basically. So they had to close it down. So for an aluminum smelter to start working again, it would take nine months for that process to finish. And it took them nine months to restart the production, and they lost $180 million. Mm -hmm. So all because one guy decided to step onto a conveyor belt. Wow. And so your, um, so your product, which is, I guess, explain to me how your product works and how it relates to that guy, okay. right? And how would it have saved him and empowered that particular worker to be more efficient, more effective, and safer in the workplace? Okay, so uh, our product is a small computer for all practical purposes. It can actually connect to the cameras in the facility. So if this guy had stepped onto the conveyor belt, we would immediately detect that he's on a conveyor belt. And our device is electrically integrated with the braking system of the conveyor belt, and we would stop it immediately. Wow. So a lot of, you know, folks that may be listening may be familiar, unfamiliar with that scope and scale. But when you think about um, advanced technologies right now that they use in power saws, mm -hmm. you know, you've seen everybody's I've seen that. Everybody's seen the videos <coughs> where they put the hot dog up against the, yeah. <laughs> you know, up against the table saw and it comes to an abrupt stop. Yeah. So uh, that's one of our competitors. We have a similar solution, which is a finger and hand detection uh, yeah. algorithm. Uh, uh, the way we work differently is we actually uh, calculate the speed and movement of the hands and fingers, and we set up a perimeter around the blade. And if wow. it decide if you, if the algorithm figures out that he's moving his hands super fast and is ominously closer to the blade, then we we wow. hit the e stop and stop the machine. Uh, different from the one that you explained. Uh, that system would actually retract the blades into the system and break the blades. Uh, we don't have to break the blades, we just stop it. Well, and what is the role in machine learning and artificial intelligence in your technology? Okay, so, uh, so these are all human behaviors, right? So object detection is one of the fundamental algorithm that we use, but what kind of objects? Uh, that's when machine learning comes in. You know, we um, we train our algorithms with different types of objects in different factory settings, with different light settings, um, and that's one of the unique features of our product. You know, we take a bottom-up approach. Okay. We visit the factory. We actually work with the uh, uh, EHS team to figure out what the standard operating processes are and we record videos and we train our algorithms for that facilities, uniquely to their facilities. So it's not a one size fits all <laughs> Correct. Appro approach. So, so taking full advantage of that machine learning and the uh, exactly. intelligence. Yes, correct. Well, what has it meant to you? So you've been in um, 
you've been in the United States, you know, 25 years, Correct. you know, and, and you're now, like we said, in, uh, in New Hampshire, what has it meant to you to come to <laughs> be in the middle of the mountains of East Tennessee in Knoxville, both, um, as a member of the, our entrepreneurial ecosystem, as well as the Techstars program? Okay. So Techstars, you know, Techstars is everywhere, you know, so there is Texas, Boston, there is Texas, New York, you know, I can commute to Boston if I want, uh, but uh, Texas, Knoxville actually focused on one of our target sectors, the industries of future. Yep. And we thought it's beneficial for us to come here because Knoxville is actually the center of the southeastern manufacturing belt. That's from Alabama mm -hmm. all the way to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. So if we hire somebody here, they can actually go and install on in a factory in Alabama and come back home. Uh, so we actually hired s one guy uh, in Knoxville, locally here. So he's an employee of Pearly Brook Labs in New Hampshire. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, if someone wants to learn more about uh, Pearly Brook and the work that you are doing, where can they go? Oh, okay. So our website is pearlybrook.com, P-E-R-L-E-Y-B-R-O-O-K.com. Um, you can watch multiple videos about our product. Um, you can schedule a demo uh, and we take emails and uh, we can keep you updated about the product as, as we iterate through this process thing. Awesome. Well, Ranjit Anthony with Pearly Brook Labs, it's an honor to have you here in Knoxville and it's an honor to talk with you. Thank you. Thank you very much.